And we're looking at number two on the constructed response, which for some reason people still turn this in blank on test day. Um, you're just letting go of 50 assessment points. When you really break it down, these are probably worth more per question because the this part of your test is 50 points, just saying. All right, but number two, this one's a good one to go over. Um, the best lesson that covers how to answer this is lesson 6.10. So let me pull out those notes to show you because it's hard to explain without showing you a few examples. So feel free, you're getting some free answers to copy them onto that paper from Friday or onto your own paper and resubmit. Okay, so we're, I'm needing to show you something before I show you how to answer that one. So this is from 610. This portion where we talked about um, the x-intercepts, also known as zeros, also known as roots, they use all those names interchangeably. Um, that you can see the equations that go with it to the left. Now you could also do other things, like you could write it in vertex form too. But I think this one might be easier to write it in chapter form because like for example, look at this one. If x intercepts are negative three and negative one, look at its matching formula. All right, what value of x makes this parentheses zero? Well, zero plus three would be three, so try again. Negative three plus three would be zero. What value of x here would make that parentheses zero? Negative one. Those match the x intercepts. Give me one second. Miss Medina. Yes. Okay. Bye. Michael, I'll remind you to send you some more. Okay. So I don't know if you guys noticed that, what we just said, but the x-intercepts were negative three and negative one. And those are both, if you plug them in for x, making at least one of the parentheses zero. Because x-intercept is when y equals zero. So if I make this equal to zero, and when we multiply stuff, if it multiplies to zero, that means one of them must equal zero. So then you could solve them separately if you want, but you're basically figuring out what can I plug into the X to make one of those parentheses zero. And there should be most of the time two answers. So like, what can I plug in here to make this one zero? So one of my X intercepts, I don't know why I keep writing it like that. It is negative four, and I keep saying negative. But yeah, or actually four, not negative four. So that's, that's right, it should be four. Right, because four minus four is zero. So one of my x-intercepts is four, just like how it is on my graph. One of them is four. Um, the other one, what would I plug in to make it zero? One, and look where my other x-intercept is. So then when I go back to that problem on the constructed response, which is somewhere, I just can't find it anymore. Over here, these are my given x intercepts. I could make it in the factored form and do say x plus four times x minus two. So basically working backwards. And seeing like, if I plug in negative four, that does give me zero here. If I plug in two, that does give me zero here. And I could probably check this with Desmos and I can see that it crosses here on the x-axis and it has that vertex. Let me just double check to be sure. But that's one way you can go about it. The other way could be with the vertex form. 
what was it? X minus two for one of them. And the other was X plus four. Other, all right, crosses through where we said it crosses. Let's see if it has the same vertex and it does. So, yeah, do the factored form, or you could do the vertex form too, but really, I think factored form is easier. If you did the vertex form, then since my vertex is this, that's my H and that's my K, you plug it into this equation which is your vertex form. I decided that I would give you this tomorrow, but I'm not gonna tell you how to use it. I'm not gonna tell you that the vertex is HK. I can tell you that now because we're not in the middle of the test, but since my vertex is HK, this isn't stretched or compressed at all. Um, plug in your H, so I'm plugging in a negative one. And then a negative nine for the K, we're gonna clean up the symbols. What happens to the double negative? So it's X plus one, close parentheses squared, and then minus nine. So both of these give you the same graph. I'll, set, I'll accept either one tomorrow, but I would definitely verify on Desmos that it matches up as the same X intercept and has the same vertex. Question on this one? Any others from either study guide? Camille? Number one on the constructive response? Okay. All right, so scrolling down. Also, I'm recording my other classes when we go over this, like they've asked different questions so far. So feel free to watch that recording if you need a little more help on some of them. But number three, is there a specific part or just like from the beginning? Okay, so Lynn and Claire were standing in the woods near a stream and each threw a stone up in the air at the same time so that it would land in the water. The graph represents the height of a stone T seconds after it was tossed up by Lynn. So this graph is for Lynn. Um, this function given by this equation is going to be the height of a stone T seconds after it was thrown by Claire. So one given to you as an equation, one given to you as a graph. In both functions, height is measured in feet. So which, whose stone hit the water first? How did that happen? So look at the graph for Lynn, because remember Lynn's was the graph. At what part of the graph would it be um, where it hits the water? It would be the x-axis. So here would signify like when it hits the water. And it wants to know whose stone hit the water first. So at what time did the Lynn stone hit the water? Between one and one and a half, what would this be? 1.25 seconds. And then for Claire, I think it'd probably be easiest to graph hers since they didn't provide you the graph. And you can do it in the factored form of sign. And then look on that x axis and compare. So let's see. It was negative 15x. So I'm going to put x not to be minus 6. Minus six is going to be, and then x minus one point five plus, right? Yeah. Okay. So then look on this x-axis. What time is that? That hurt in the water. So if hers hit at 1.5 and Lynn's hit at 1.25, who's hit first? Lynn's or Claire's? So Lynn's at 
one point two five seven. Right, because squares we got one point five. Is that there? Which makes sense. I might not have to continue to graph it because it shows you how to find the zero. But either way, you could graph it in this. Um, next part, I mean, you can pack up. Sorry, it's a little bit. Um, it says Claire's phone reached the maximum height of this many seconds after it was blocked. Claire's still reach a higher maximum. So, where do you look at your maximum height? So, vertex, good. Michael, all I need is a reason mark. Yeah, you're taking your test tomorrow. Mm -hmm. 